Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 353 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and check this out, all right? Buy the merch. The Spears Pizza Parlor is officially open, and T-shirts have been, been going crazy, man. We sold heaps of fucking T-shirts, which is amazing. LouisSpears.com, get yours. That you, It's pre-order only, and pre-orders close September 30. And if you miss that, you're going to miss your delivery. Piping hot. T-shirt delivered to your door. They're really good. Check out the nice... I love a nice, good, high-quality neckline mm. because sometimes you buy a T-shirt and it just fucking crumbles after a while. Not this one. It's good. All right? Please don't look at the massive coffee stain <laughs> on mine. I've got a sample. So I didn't want to wash it because I didn't want to, I didn't want to have to then iron it so I thought I'll just wear it dirty and hopefully that will inspire sales. Loosebeers.com. All right? Okay. Now, look, something very important uh, has come out uh, and that's what I wanted to start the show with. Uh, an incredibly important speech has just happened in Australia's parliament and I would like to listen to this because it's very important. President, today I rise to address an oft forgotten segment of our society. To the sigmas of Australia, I say that this goofy air government have been capping, not just now, but for a long time. A few of you may remember when they said there'll be no phantom tax under the government I lead. They're capaholics. They're also yapaholics. They yap nonstop about how their cost of living measures are changing lives for all Australians. Just put the fries in the bag, little bro. They tell us that they're locked in on improving the housing situation in this country. They must have brain rot from watching too much Kai Sinat and forgot about their plans to ban social media for kids under 14. If that becomes law, you can forgo skull emoji all about watching Duke Dennis or catching a dub with the bros on Fort. Chat. Is this Prime Minister serious? Even though he's the Prime Minister of Australia, sometimes it feels like he's the CEO of Ohio. I would be taking an L if I did not mention the ops who want to cut WA's GATS and services tax. The decision voters will be making in a few months' time will be between a mid-government, a dog water opposition, or a crossbench that will mock both of them. Though some of you cannot yet vote, I hope when you do, it will be in a more goated Australia for a government with more aura. Skibbity. President, today I... My mortgage is twice as much as it was when I first fucking got the house. Cheese is $11. Do your fucking job, bitch. Shut up. Why the fuck are politicians getting on and going skibbity toilet reads for TikTok clips? Do your fucking job, bitch. This sucks. Cheese is $11. My mum steals from the supermarket. That sucks. I'm going to get up and I'm going to do a speech and I'm going to go viral. Cool, brother. I, I'm watching homeless people in Frankston fucking overdose all the time. But that's all right because we've got some independent senator putting keywords written by a staffer that she doesn't even fucking understand to go viral for 14-year-olds on TikTok. Do something. Oh, you know what will get people? You know what will go viral? Do your fucking job. We're selling weapons to fucking land on children. Country's fucked. This sucks, bro. <laughs> Phantom tax, do your job. All right? Why do we have fucking politicians talking about Kai Sinat in the fucking... In fucking Parliament House? Isn't that the chick that got kicked out? Yeah. She's the one that she's the one that got. Well, no, she just got dropped from the Labor Party. She got dropped from the La Labor Party because she, uh, because they wouldn't. She crossed the floor during. A she vote. crossed the floor over Israel Palestine, yeah. and now as an independent senator, she's making a huge impact on the Israel Palestine crisis by saying "skibbity toilet" in the fucking Parliament House. Well, great. I'm glad she she crossed the floor so she can fight for freedom by going viral on TikTok. Great job. Did you hear that that um, Netanyahu actually saw that speech and has gone, you know what? Open the borders. Let him in. Give it all back. 
It's just- the leader of Hamas came out and actually not only did they give all of the hostages back, they actually revived the ones they killed because they watched that speech and they were like, you know what? That was when she when she referenced Kai Sinat and during her time at Parliament House, I thought, fuck, what am I doing? Cancel the fatwa. It's over. Senator Pyman, you've done it. <laughs> Dude, whenever I see a politician get up there and you can tell that they're trying, they're not trying to do their job, they're trying to go viral with their speech, it makes me so fucking angry because we paid for the speech. The 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 every every dollar that you pay in tax, some of that went into the, the little fucking idiot who wrote that speech and we're like oh this will go big on tiktok this will, get, this will get you a lot of support with people who can't vote for five years sucks bro do your job you know what it reminds me of it's it reminds me of like um like when they when those politicians and american politicians do this too like if you ever see a politician with like um they've got an easel and they've got those giant printed out like they're doing like a a slideshow with cardboard Whenever you see them do that, some of them are good because they illustrate points for the public to understand in an easily digestible way, which can help. But a lot of them now, since the more the more natural ones have just gone crazy viral, most of them now are just trying to score points to go nuts on uh, on X, formerly Twitter. Mm. Um, you know what it reminds me of? Whenever you, whenever I see a politician doing a speech that's clearly just written to go viral on TikTok. It reminds me of like a, a comedian at an open mic trying to get crowd work clips. He's like filming it on his phone. He fucking sucks. What do you do for work? Oh, you're an accountant? <laughs> oh, this guy's bloody good with numbers. Hey. And then for some reason they still post it. <laughs> Gets no laughs. They post it. Mm. It's also disrespectful to the people who are about to vote in their first election. Is that what she thinks they need to hear to understand. Yeah, is that what is that what they want? She's like, oh, the the current government and the opposition are wasting everyone's time. Oh, so the alternative is getting up there and be like, hey, hello, fellow children, skibbity toilet riz, phantom tax. The only very funny thing was when she said they're yapaholics or whatever she said. Yeah, that is good. Yeah, could you, but could you imagine like, getting up there and doing like a minute 30 speech full of Gen Z meme language and then calling the other people yapaholics. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's awesome. You know what? I take it all back. She's got my vote. Whatever, whatever party the, that sh she's an independent, she's got my vote. I'm going to move to whatever, you know, if wh whatever constituency she represents, think, good luck. I think she's in WA. WA, right. Well, good luck to those guys. That's your that's your if dude, if I <laughs> I got my my bill for um my rates, my rates bill. Oh, no. you got to pay rates. Mm. If uh if I got my rates bill and then I saw m the person representing my area going up there be like skibbity toilet, I would light my rates bill on fire. <laughs> Get rid of it. Nah, all good. I'm sure she is really good at her job. Good on her. That was you know what? It's going viral. Good on you. Um, anyway, speaking of some some real politicians, all right, Donald Trump and, and Kamala Harris just had their first debate, their first their, their first debate ever, and you know what? It was a true battle of minds, wasn't it? <laughs> I I was watching it like it was tennis. I couldn't. I and, and it was a close game. All right. On you know what I what uh, what I think was the difference between this debate and the previous one, right? The previous one with Donald Trump and Joe Biden was Joe Biden was so clearly brain dead and senile and just old dementia riddled with brain worms that Donald Trump could have done the debate naked and looked more sane. So that's why he won because it doesn't like if I have to pick between like a like a bit of a crazy guy and a, and a dude whose brain is like I can see it leaking out of his ears, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna ha- unfortunately I'm gonna have to go with the dude that that says a that says a couple of crazy things, but at least he's there and can play golf, right? That's the guy that I pick. But when you put Trump next to like just Kamala Harris, <laughs> you start to see a little bit of his crazy come out a little bit. It becomes a little bit more obvious, you know, when when the person asking the question is like, uh, so uh, Donald Trump, what do you? What's your tax plan? What's your plan for the average person? Are you going to raise taxes or are you going to lower taxes? And how is that going to look like for the average family? And Donald Trump's like, she wants to do tra- transgender surgery on illegal aliens in prison. It's like, all right. <laughs> Maybe they do, but who gives a fuck? Because how many of them are in there? Hey, it's a, I want to I wanna cut my dick off in prison. So all we got to do is traffic some drugs over the border and get caught intentionally, and then finally we'll get a pussy in these pants, Ray. I don't think that's happening. And if it is, it's, it's got to be like two blokes that are doing it. You know? I don't, th- like, I just don't think, like, with, like, I don't think that transgender issues is something that, you should uh, really be debating when you're on like the globe, when you're in charge of the global economy. Like, I don't think it's very relevant to be like, oh, should should we be paying for gender transitions in prison? It's like, okay, I feel like this is a matter that could be discussed over email. Like, <laughs> I think it's one of the pressing issues that the world needs to hear. It's more so like, hey. What's go- what, what are we going to do about Russia and Ukraine? What are we going to do about Israel Palestine? How are we going to what are we going to do with Russia with sanctions against Russia? And then Trump's like, "Yeah, but what about what about pe- people who want to who want to change the shape of their their vagina in prison?" Okay, well, I'm sure there's like seven people that might be considering doing that, but we could probably get to that a lot later. Like that's something that like uh you know what that like with my job like I'm thinking about the shows and I want to make the shows good. Uh, it would be good to post a, a reel on Facebook, all right? But that's a job that I'll give to an, an intern, you know? Like I'm sure it would be it would be useful for me to be posting reels on Facebook, but that's but the main concern is my actual job. And when you hear like the president or someone who wants to be the president is like, dude, immigrants' penises in prison. It's like, okay, well let's. Maybe zoom in on or zoom out a little bit and see some bigger issues. Mm. But he did dunk on her a few times, which was quite good. But she, you know what she did a really good job at? She did a great job at baiting him. Mm. Like she was so good. Like you could really tell that this this was not, you could really tell that this was not the first time that she's been standing across uh, from like uh an accused sexual offender. You know, she's done this before. As a prosecutor, she's seen a few of these people and she knows how to how to get under their skin a little bit. And one way she got out of Trump's skin, <laughs> it's like she goes, let's talk about Donald Trump's rallies. People start to leave them early and you just see up, because we watched it from the start, you and me, and Trump was doing he, a really good a really good job at seeming like a normal bloke. <laughs> he was doing a great job at seeming like a normal bloke because I feel like the the only obstacle standing between Trump and the presidency is he's a little bit fucking out there and a lot of people are like, oh, maybe he is crazy. So I feel like all he has to do is like be a normal bloke for about eight months and he could win. But that's really difficult for him, especially when when some bitch... Is going, let's talk about your rallies. People start to leave your rallies halfway through, and you just saw the flip, the, the switch flip in his head. He's like, well, no one even goes to her rallies. Her rallies suck, and everyone likes my rallies. My rallies are the best. And also, ha- Haitians are coming over and eating people's pets. I saw her on TV. So she really kind of baited that crazy out of him, and I th- feel like that wasn't the best look. But also, this was not like the Hillary Clinton debate where (laughs) I feel like he just dunked on Hillary relentlessly for the entire time to the point where the audience was going, ooh. (laughs) 
No one went, oh, during this debate. And it wasn't like the Joe Biden debate where everyone was just fucking horrified. Like, oh, my God, he's actually dead. <laughs> he's actually not alive. This guy's deceased. This is horrifying. And Biden did so terribly that they swapped him out. This debate was like, if you like Kamala Harris, she won. If you like Donald Trump, he won. I don't think it convinced anyone no. to swap over. I think it was just like, yep, she said what I agreed with. Yep, he said what I agreed with. The media are lying. Donald Trump's a criminal. It just, I feel like it's didn't convince anyone of anything, um, which is great. So, which is good because w that means that whatever, whoever wins, there'll be riots. <laughs> and and I'm looking forward to that, you know, season finale of America. As 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 an observer with no no dog in the fight. Look, honestly, I hope that he loses uh, just so that he can campaign for the next election. Because uh, for him, all right, not and this is like. Like if if we really if we were really honest with ourselves, does Donald Trump want to be president? No, he wants to campaign. He loves his rallies. You saw how how upset he got when she said people leave his rallies. Like, hey, I put a lot of effort into those rallies. I think I think I was crushing. <laughs> I'm really good. Thank you very much. We everyone everyone at my rallies has fun. The only people who leave early are the people leaving in body bags. Everyone else is there. We love it. We're having a good time. You're just mad because no one has a good time at your rallies because you're, you're a boring bitch. And you know why she's a boring bitch? Because she's fucking in charge and running shit. And that's boring. Donald Trump wants to be on the road fucking touring. He's a comedian. I start to go, I've been home for two weeks. I'm going fucking crazy. I'm going crazy because I'm not going to get on a flight or a train or a bus to go and do stand-up on Friday. And I'm, I'm going fucking nuts. All right? So I don't want to get a TV show or... Do the, ton do the Tonight Show for the next 20 years. I want to be on the road campaigning, being a comedian. I see it in Trump. He doesn't want to be president. Oh, I got to get up in the morning and do fucking paperwork? Boring. Why can't I just go to a rally, get shot at? That's exciting. I don't know. I just, I think that I just, you know what? No matter who wins, I just hope everyone has fun. That's what I hope. I hope everyone has a good time. I do like, though, that um, in the aftermath, right, it's always interesting seeing what each person's team says and the, from the fans to the official representatives. And the official reps on Trump's team were like, oh, this is, this is fucking... This is like a three on one. All right. Not only was I arguing with Kamala Harris, I was also arguing with the fact checkers. <laughs> this is bullshit. And it's like, I don't, I feel like that's not like the, the greatest, the greatest argument of like, oh, how come every time she said something, they didn't pull up stats that prove that what she was saying was equivocally false. But when I say, that Haitians are coming over and stealing people's cats and eating them alive. They pull up statistics from city managers saying that there hasn't been a single report of that happening even once. This is rigged. That was the big, the big one that, that Trump really pushed back on of like the, oh, these illegal Haitian immigrants are coming into this one small town and they're, they're, they're kidnapping people's pets and chopping, chopping off the heads of goose, geese, and cooking and eating them. Now look, that, I don't think that has happened, all right? Haitians don't do that. You know who does do that? People in Frankston, because that actually fucking happened to my ducks. 
back in COVID in lockdown, one of the only things that made me feel better was going every day to feed the ducks. And then I got there one day and there was one less duck and I thought, oh, they must have taken it into the vet or something. I get there the next day, there's now zero ducks. I talk to the guy, he goes, oh yeah, someone killed one of the ducks and then came back the next night and killed the other two. Because he probably fucking enjoyed it. It was, oh, that was fun. By now he's probably killed a woman. All right, that's Frankston activities. I, well, I don't know if that, that, that man could have been Haitian, but from what I understand of those people, I don't think they can afford plane tickets all the way to Australia just to kill a duck. Three ducks. I really liked the quote where he said, uh, I probably took a bullet to the head for the things they're saying about me. Yes, yeah, like he can't, like he can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I probably took a bullet, I think. I don't know. It, 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 answered, it answered the gray, my grey matter. I forgot. When, when really, like, what almost certainly happened was it was, it was just, like, some fucking schizo nutter who wanted to go out with a bang. And it was like, ah, killing myself is a little bit... That's a little bit gay. I want to fucking make the news. Let's, let's see who I can get. <laughs> That's, like... They looked at his internet history and he was just, like... The laziest assassin ever. He was just Googling famous people. <laughs> like, he was, he was like, that guy who was trying to kill, who tried to kill Trump was just like a, a really horny concreter after work Googling brothels near me. He wasn't looking at any of the women. If do I find any of these chicks attractive? He was just purely like, what's the closest broth? I'm going there now and I'm going to fuck. That guy was just looking up. All right. Who's the closest politician with a rally to me? He looked up a few celebrities and was like, oh, that's around the corner on Sunday. Let's go. And checked out. <laughs> that's going to be, that's how embarrassing. You think, you, you think you're going to fucking change the course of history and then you fuck it up and everyone just calls you an ugly incel who can't shoot. And then you do, and and you die, and everyone's like, "What a fucking loser!" <laughs> and that's it. That's your legacy. Oh, that least fucking idiot, you dork. And even everyone who he went to school with was like, well, "He was a fucking dork." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be, like the media were going to his school. Was he a terrorist? Like, was he left wing? Was he right wing? Maybe he was trans, and he and he hated Trump. And they're like, "No, he was just a little fucking freak weirdo." He just got no pussy, man. He was just, he just sucked. I told, I, I actually tried to make friends with him, but he was just weird. <laughs> he wasn't even bullied. <laughs> like they, it was just kind of like a boring guy. Um, so look, the debate, yeah, was just uh, your favorite one. Is is basically what happened? I think that like. Kamala Harris did a great job, but I think that's all she was trying to do was just trying to go, look at this, look at this, hey, look at that, you see this? That's all she was, I don't think she was trying to win the debate. I think she was just trying to poke him in the right spot to, to make him say something insane like, oh, she wants to, she wants to uh, chop the cocks off illegal immigrants and turn them into pussies in jail. <laughs> and, then, and then all she had to do is, is go... <laughs> she she literally it was like six times when she looked at the camera was like you guys hearing this shit you guys are <laughs> you guys hearing this shit watch this people leave your rallies early like, no they don't we have fun we're having a good time <laughs> so I hope I hope that he loses just so that we get more four more years of this of just campaigning because it because it would because it'll be so fun. What do you think he does if he if he loses? I think I think there's going to be another riot because he's he's still saying that he didn't lose the last one. Oh, did, did you see the clip where where the moderator's like, uh, "You've said X Y Z about losing the election." And he yeah, goes, he's, he's gone. Oh, they pulled up like three separate quotes from three separate interviews very recently of him going, "Oh, we lost by a hair. Uh, we just lost." And something like we almost we almost got there, but it wasn't enough. Something like that. Lost by a whisker. Lost by a whisker. That's what that's what he said. Uh, and then and then Trump was going. <laughs> they pull up three quotes. You said this, 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 and then he goes, "Did I say that? Uh, I was being sarcastic." 
I don't remember saying that, but also if I did say that, I was joking. And then I just watched the clips and he just wasn't joking. <laughs> that is his problem. Is he, he, loves a, he just loves a lie. I think that's the issue. He, he just goes, no, whatever he's feeling right now, that's what's true. And, the, and you know what? That's why a lot of people fucking love him because that's superhuman, right? That's really, that's really fucking relatable. So many people are like that. I'm just like, oh, I feel like this today. Like you can't say that he's, well, you can't say that he's uh, not a liar, but he has, he does have an authenticity about him that's so much more fallible and human than like Kamala Harris or just about any fucking politician left or right where their job is to be, is to remove as much fucking humanity from them because humans aren't perfect. He hasn't done that at all. And I think that's why a lot of people like him and, and fuck, he's funny. He's very charismatic and he's very funny. And you know what? His rallies are fun. I'll say that. I don't know if they'd be fun for two hours, but not much is. So yeah, look, Speaking as an Australian, not a US citizen, I hope whoever's immigration policies are more lax wins. All right. That's what I that's what I want. I hope whoever has the loosest immigration policies, that's who I want in charge of the country. Whoever's gonna whoever's most likely to approve my application for a green card, that's my president. And but also if that person doesn't win, I support whoever does 100 percent Whoever wins, I want to be a part of it and I and I and I support them and they have my loyalty. I'll be dressing up as Uncle Sam flying the flag of whichever color wins. Red, blue, fucking green. I don't care. Let me in. Um <clears throat> comment below. Who do you think won the debate? You know who uh who Taylor Swift thought won? Trump. No, she came out and she supported Kamala Harris and she put up a big statement. She got the Swifty approval, which actually is fucking huge. Like that's a lot of people were saying that she wasn't going to endorse anyone. She was going to stay out of it um, because endorsing Hillary Clinton didn't go very well for her. And a lot of people were saying, well, she the only reason she even endorsed Hillary was because she thought her career was dipping a little bit, which maybe it was. And then the endorsement kind of injected her into the, Cult, the consciousness a little bit more, but he ha she has come out and she's uh, she's supported uh, Kamala Harris. She's posted a beautiful photo uh, of her with her cat, um, and she's she said this is why I'm endorsing Kamala Harris. And then she signed it off, childless cat lady, right? Because a lot of people say, oh, she's Taylor Swift is just like a she's 34 years old, she's got no kids, she's unmarried, she's just a crazy childless cat lady um and uh <laughs> elon musk responded to this endorsement all right and uh so so this this is this is really what's going to win elections here is not just influential people endorsing candidates but influential people showing the type of person they are when they endorse a candidate so taylor swift has come out and she's endorsed Kamala Harris and she said, I believe that she's going to be the better president for our country. And then she's kind of hit out against sexist men saying gross things about her, right? So she's gone, I, this is what I want for our beautiful country and I think sexism is wrong. Elon Musk has come out uh, with, an, with an equally uh, normal response and said, uh, fine, Taylor, you win. I will give you a child and guard your cats with my life. <laughs> Very normal. Taylor Swift says, I think Kamala Harris should be president. Elon Musk says, I'm going to fuck Taylor Swift and get her pregnant. <laughs> I know who has my vote. Could you imagine how fucking autistic the Elon Musk Taylor Swift kid would be? be it wouldn't be good. I don't know if anyone's seen the alien movie, but like the alien at the end of it, I reckon it'd come out like that. <laughs> it's not good. Isn't that awesome though? That like the, the CEO of one of the biggest social media websites in the world is like, I'm going to get Taylor Swift pregnant. He's That's cool. Everyone pregnant. 
He is. And yeah, he would too. I bet, he, I bet, you know how a lot of people, um, did you know in the 70s, the CIA, this is true, they revealed a, a, a it's really scary, a gun that sh- shoots like a f- frozen bullet, like water, so an icicle, tiny little bullet, mm. full of this uh, fish poison. So they shoot it at you, it pricks you on the arm, and then melts and you have a heart attack. And it's effectively undetectable. They did a whole press conference about this gun, like, look at what we fucking invented. That's like those Russians who keep falling out of windows, apartments, right? windows. Right, right? So, so maybe all of these journalists that have... Heart attacks, all these people, these influential people that start talking about Epstein before the world was ready to reveal it, mm-hmm. and then they have heart attacks before they testify. Maybe that's that gun. Anyway, I say all this to say because the <laughs> Elon Musk actually has a similar gun that's full of his frozen cum, cum. <laughs> yeah. and it's more of a sniper rifle. So if Taylor Swift is doing one of her fancy little concerts and she does the splits, watch out, all right, because he'll he'll be up there. And he'll have a lot better aim than that little fucking incel freak at the Trump rally. Because <laughs> he's had a lot of practice. Just shooting autistic sperm into strangers. Pew, pew, pew. So what I'm really trying to say is um, Nick Ocado Avocado has lost a lot of weight. He looks good. He looks great with this shirt on. I... I Guarantee you that guy looks like a fucking roadmap when he takes that show off. I want to see the stretch marks. Give me a look. I bet he had to fucking staple his nipples back on. There's no fucking way that guy isn't walking around with like a deflated air mattress attached to his chest or just fucking flappy skin. His tits tucked into his socks. All right. Either that's going on, or he's gotten it all removed and stapled back on. He looks like Frankenstein. Is it possible to lose all that weight and not have loose skin? Like if he just didn't eat anything and and did a water fast for two years? It actually, they have actually done studies where very obese people can not eat food and survive off their own fat as long as. They take supplements, and I think they have to have a lot of salt and electrolytes. Mm. There's some some study they did where they just took like a hundred really fat people, and they just gave them like a supplement concoction, mm. and they felt like shit for like a week, and then all of a sudden their their body just figured it out, and then they just shrunk. Probably not very healthy, but possible. He also, but not not you would have the skin. I mean, he was fucking huge. I His a- belly was it was like out to here, man. He would have so much skin. I reckon it was it was Ozempic and working out and diet and stuff. Did he become more gay? He, I feel like when he was fat, he was doing it as a bit. So if you don't know, it, Nick Ocado Avocado, he's, he's one of the generational talents of YouTube. Uh, and his, his, his ability was, uh, his special talent was eating a lot of food while being obnoxiously annoying and, uh, and, and looking like a, a piece of shit who would throw tantrums on camera and people would hate watch it. And I never got into it. it the, literally one of the only things of Nick Ocado that I've actually consumed as a viewer is when uh, Keelan and I looked at his OnlyFans one day and Keelan almost vomited. Like, that's actually the extent of what I know about Nick Ocado is I can't, I cannot watch mukbangs. It's disgusting. I turn it on. I hear the chewing. I have to turn it off. It's foul. I don't know how anyone can watch it. And I'm not, and I'm not just saying this because a lot of people doing the mukbangs are fat. I also can't look at the skinny Japanese women that do it either. I can't look at it. It's uh, I hate it. People fucking chewing with their mouth open at dinner. If they were a video, I would close it. I can't. I don't know. It's yuck. Mm. You ever see those travel documentaries where they go to cultures where table noises are not rude and people are like slurping and burping and shit? I like it. Like it makes me like that's one of the only things that makes me racist. <laughs> One of the only things that makes me go, you know what? Some cultures are wrong. 
But just with the food noise, I don't like it. It's not good. Anyway, I just can't watch the Mark Bank stuff. So I've not consumed much of his stuff other than when when me and Keelan looked at his prolapsed asshole mm. on OnlyFans and Keelan almost fucking vomited. Like you had such a visceral gut reaction to uh, seeing the inside of Nick Ricardo's guts that uh, I was like, oh, that's what I look like when I watch a mukbang. It I was foul. I can't re- even remember what we looked at because it was we didn't pay for it. it was just I could bring Google. it up. Yeah, I think I might have a look. Yeah, I, I know exactly what we – it's like, you know when, it, when you – like those old uh, flat screen TVs, if you left it on too long, paused, it burns into the screen. That's how – that's I've got one of those in my, in my memory – of his uh, asshole. Like, what, what, I mean, what happens oh. if I just Google Nick Ricardo yeah. asshole? Um, images. I just saw a video, a, a picture of his. Oh, that's right. I remember exactly what it was. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yuck. See, I don't know why I can look at this, but I can't watch him eat food. I just got transported back to Tasmania. <laughs> Bring me back. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so, basically, so Nick Ricardo was like, what? Looks 200 kilos? Maybe. He's pretty short, though. 150. Fucking huge. All right? Big fatty, fat, fat. Massive. And what he did was he just revealed just this week that he's actually really skinny now, but he had been posting pre-recorded videos where he's morbidly obese, talking about how he's been trying to lose weight and failing and starting a diet and quitting a diet so so that he could eat... 30,000 calories of instant noodles and shit like that and just making an absolute fool of himself. He was running an OnlyFans where he was posting whole and then he's just come back and he's gone two steps ahead. I'm always two steps ahead. Head shaved like Dr. Evil with leukemia, very underweight. He's gone the opposite way and he's saying that, like direct quote, this has been one of the greatest social experiments of my life. Nick, what was the social experiment? Like, what's the experiment? You were you were really gross and fat and looked really gross and fat and people went yuck. What's the what's the experiment? What are people gonna do if I get really yucky and fat and act obnoxious and start to kill myself with food? Will people tell me that I'm killing myself with food and that I need to go on a diet? What's the experiment? I don't get it. Hmm. What what part, like where where do I, like how am I the one getting tricked when you're the one fucking eating hot Cheeto noodles and posting your own prolapsed asshole on OnlyFans? Where have I been tricked? Because all I've done is looked at that and gone, yuck. You're the one who's got so many fucking stretch marks, they probably look like a, a, a fucked up Sharon ball that you gave to your dog. <laughs> oh, come on. What? <laughs> That's very... <laughs> I'm the one that's been tricked? <laughs> you look like a fucking a deflated AFL football that the dogs chewed up. There's no way that I'm the fucking idiot in this situation. Show me the inside of your legs, mate. I bet there's fucking scar tissue, but like there and on your nuts from your thighs rubbing together. I'm the idiot. Two steps ahead. You couldn't take two steps for two years, cunt. (laughs) I feel like the... The clip of the politician that I watched at the start of the podcast has poisoned my mind for the rest of it, and this is bordering on mean. <laughs> bordering. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, buy a t shirt. All right, this is what I'm trying to say. Loosebeers.com. The pizza parlor's open. I tell you, he'll be there front. You know what's also fucked? Is that he's posted this video. I'm two steps ahead. I've tricked you. I tricked you into thinking that I was fat. Like, it would be funny if he was wearing a fat suit and, like, he wasn't actually fat, but he fucking was. Oh, you guys thought I was destroying my body? Guess what? I was planning on losing weight. All right, that's every fat person on earth. Yeah, I'll lose weight later. 
Except the only difference is is you're, you're posting Hull and they weren't. Although it's so impressive, the amount of weight that he's lost, however he did it, whether it was Ozempic or, or whatever, however he did it, it's amazing. Super impressive. But you know what? Thinking about it, not that surprising to see so much discipline from a guy who's a classically trained violinist. Like, have you heard him play the violin? Beautiful. Amazing. Undeniably majestic. And you need to practice so much to get good at violin. I played violin all through primary school and high school, and I practiced a lot, and I got kind of good. And that was so difficult, and you have to practice all the time. If I touched the violin now, I wouldn't know what to do with it. I can't, I can't play violin anymore because I didn't practice for two weeks once, and then it was gone. So not only does he have the discipline to become and maintain that level of skill at the violin. He also has the discipline to wake up every day for an, for like a year or two years and eat the most foul food you've ever seen in your life to the point where he becomes grotesquely obese. That's discipline. All right. A lot of you lazy fatties are getting big off Big Macs. All right. Deep fry 30 Big Macs, eat that until you vomit on camera and then post rim. That's discipline. That's tough. But now he's lost the weight. You know what he's doing? Muck bangs. <laughs> he's going to go, you know what I would love? This is how you would actually get me, all right? I don't feel like I've been tricked by looking at a fat guy and going, oh, he's going to die of a heart attack if he keeps doing this. He should lose weight. Like that, I don't feel like I've been tricked. If, however, though, in about two weeks, he releases another video where he's fat again, that would be great. That'd be awesome. If like he went skinny, like he took a year to get skinny, he filmed his gotcha video, then spent a year getting fat, filmed his fat video, drops it in two days. I would, I would end the podcast. That's a good one. There's a Russian guy mm. who is a, a fitness influencer who got really fat, got Nikocado fat to prove that he could lose all the weight. I've heard of this. In about a year, he lost all the weight. But now you're right. He's got that leftover tummy like skin. Yeah. But he, what he was doing at the time was filming a bunch of videos while he was morbidly obese. And as he got skinnier, would do like match cuts within the videos. So he'd be dancing, kind of exactly uh. kind of like what Nakata's ever do, Nakata is doing. He'd be dancing as a fatty, and then it would cut to him in the same position, dancing skinny. Cool. So maybe that's what Nakata's trying to do. That's like I have this uh, this idea of um, like there's this idea in my head of like, man, I want like, do you reckon I could get addicted to heroin and quit? <laughs> I know. Like it's such it's you know that that I mean at least those two are making some money out of it. Mm. Very high stakes to start heroin and then try and quit. Maybe quit because you can't vlog that, can you? Day one of heroin. Day three of heroin. Uh, all right, can I? Can you guys do it into my Patreon? I need a fucking shot of H. And then I went. And then I you'd never see me again. I sold my phone and my camera. So I hope that we get to watch him become fat again. Like what's the, what do you reckon is the end goal of this now? You reckon he's just going to do it again? That's boring. Nah. I would love to see him get jacked. Like if he did like a Sam Sullock thing, if he just dropped mm. the character entirely, because he's actually in a, in a spot now where he could fucking, because guarantee you all these people watching these mukbangs religiously are big fat losers. If he could grab all those people and go, come with me. Let's do it together. He could actually become a, a massive fitness influencer, make even more money. And if he's then also hot, I bet he could charge a premium on those whole picks. He is very funny. He is. I, I have never really watched any of his videos other than like the uh, Nicardo Avocado fan pages. Mm. And they just released the highlights of his videos. Mm. Yeah, I see them come up on TikTok every now and then, but if they include him eating, I have to skip. Mm. 
So TikTok has just learned. I don't show him that. He thinks it's yuck. I love him. Mm. He's not fat. It's just water weight. That is funny. Him insisting that it's that it's water weight. Um, how funny would it be though? Like, obviously, this didn't happen. But do you reckon? Do you reckon a few fat influencers have like had this idea and then failed losing the weight? <laughs> yeah. Like that's what that like what's ultimately very impressive about it is the the weight loss. Like that's the crazy thing. And also keeping it a secret for so long mm. as well. Although if that guy wasn't wearing the red t-shirt and he was a hundred kilos lighter with a shaved head, you just wouldn't. Especially if he's still uploading. You know, people was was it you that was telling me that he was doing cameos and people there were like rumors <laughs> of him losing weight because he because you can't pre-record cameos. I would know because I've got a cameo. You can Google that. Um, but uh, although if, if you are if you do order a cameo um, and I look really obese, <laughs> just don't worry about it. Irrelevant. Um, yeah, so there were rumors circulating on the internet. Oh, I think he's lost weight. People are going, you're acting crazy, man. That's sick. Um, I saw the Alien movie, the new one. Fuck, it was good. Mm. It was so good. Have you seen any of the Alien movies? I haven't seen any. You should watch them. I watched them when I was a teenager and I didn't really get them. But when you watch them as an adult, it's the, the movies kind of aren't about the alien. It's more so about um, working for an oppressive company oh. that doesn't give a fuck about you at all. Um which I obviously just didn't pick up on when I was like a kid, but as an as an adult, it's super interesting to watch the movies with that view. And the and the the most recent one is is great, and it focuses on that. Um, but anyway, this is a spoiler for the a bit of a spoiler for the for this most recent movie. What's it All right? called? Romulus. Yeah, Alien Romulus. Right. Uh, Great reference to the founding of Rome where uh, there was Remus and Romulus whose uh, parents died. So they survived by drinking the uh, the milk of a wolf and then they went on to found Rome and uh, I think Remus betrayed his brother Romulus. Didn't one of them kill the other? Yeah, Remus. Remus killed Romulus or Romulus killed Remus. Must I be don't Romulus. know. Anyway, that's true. That happened in real life. Um, <laughs> anyway, so there's so there's these aliens, right? And the 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 whole alien thing is uh, it's kind of a parasite, and whatever the parasite goes into, it takes your DNA, and then it morphs into an alien, right? That fuses with your DNA, right? So do you want to hear this? This is a full spoiler for the end of the movie. I'm never going to see it. Okay, good, because I can't do the bit. There's there's an alien right at the end, right, that uh, a pregnant woman is – so she's pregnant with a human and then she gets injected with this um, DNA accelerant thing, right, mm -hmm. to advance humanity into the next stage, mm -hmm. right? But obviously it's fucking – poison and it corrupts anyway she doesn't get infected her infant child gets infected by it and then she rapidly it rapidly grows in her and then she it's disgusting she gives birth to this egg and then out of this egg uh comes this horrifying long alien thing and then it runs away and hides and they grow really fast right so the final scene of the of the movie is coming across like the most disgusting, horrifying, scary looking alien human hybrid ever, right? And the main character walks into the room where it is and it's like this seven, eight foot human shaped thing with these incredibly fucked long limbs, but this alien head and a tail and it was... I was in the cinema and I was going like this the whole time going, what the fuck? It was so creepy and gross and off-putting and scary, right? And then I, the movie, the movie ends 
And that was a scary, long fingers. It was like fucking scary. I didn't get scared very much or I didn't get grossed out. But the way that thing moved, it was so unnatural and creepy. Um, I will cut that out. Um, thank you. I thought she was right there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Dog. Um, the thing was so gross and unnerving and off-putting that I had to Google how they did it on camera, like how they animated it. Mm. I Google it. It was a guy in prosthetics who's actually that tall and it was the most gross, off-putting thing ever. And then I saw the name of the guy that played the alien in the suit. And I recognized the name because it's this guy, Robert Bobrovsky, who is like seven foot seven and looks like a fucking alien. And the reason I recognize him is because highlights of him playing basketball went so viral like seven or eight years ago. And still to this day, I get tagged in those highlights <laughs> because people say, you look like him. So I'm sitting there in the cinema going, oh, this guy's fucking horrifying. Half my fucking fan base is like, hey, that's you. That's you, man. You look like that disgusting alien freak. <laughs> the guy's not even really in a costume. They just painted him blue like he's that fucking morphing chick from the X-Men. <laughs> <laughs> they stuck a tail in his ass like a furry on a, with a butt plug and they were like, all right, you're the scariest thing Lewis has ever seen. I'm like going, oh, my God, what the fuck? Turns out I was looking in the mirror. <laughs> awesome. What a blow to my self-esteem. Thank God I've got a new chin. I should have I gone into the surgeon and be like, oh, hey, while you're in there, Doc, can you fucking shorten some of my limbs and fingers? Thanks, mate. Not the most important appendage, though. Leave that where it is. Thank you very much. <laughs> so yeah you should see the movie now that I've sp that doesn't really spoil the end it's just like at the end there's a gross alien like what spoiler I'll probably never see any of them they're good and you know what was good about it is there were no pretty much no special effects it was mostly practical even the aliens mm which is great. I don't know why they're still fucking animating stuff, with su especially with such huge budgets. That Alien movie had an $80 million budget, which it seems like movies don't need more than that. Mm. All the actors were no names. So I feel like maybe if you have like five big actors, that could blow your budget up by like 50 to 100 million. But like you don't even need... Big actors, I feel. Do you? I didn't reckon. I didn't. I mean, although I guess the the big actor or the big draw is the franchise name Alien, where like I'm not seeing Alien because it's got Michael Fassbender in it. I'm seeing it because it's Alien. So maybe maybe with big franchise things, you don't need super famous actors. That's why it really confused me why they got Robert D Downey Jr. as Doctor Doom. It's like I feel like they don't Marvel doesn't need that. But then you said the only reason you're going to see it is because he's in it. So yeah. maybe it does work. I won't be seeing any more Avengers unless Iron Man is in it. Mm. Um, like the Minecraft movie looks like dog shit because it's 100%. Like it's just a green screen. Like you can tell that it's just Jason Momoa and, and four short people wandering around a fucking warehouse hangar with Jack Black. A lot of comments in last week's episode saying I was wrong for my opinions on Jack Black. Yeah, I think he's generally likable. I think like that's why people were so um, harsh on Jack Black with the whole Trump assassination thing and dropping his friend because people loved him so much they were very disappointed in their guy mm. that, that he dropped his mate because they were like, oh, we thought you were more like us, like you, like you were like a person, not like a corporate yeah. Thing. But your opinion hasn't changed? No. 
<laughs> Fuck that. I got a message last night from a friend who listened to the episode. And he was like, what do you mean you don't like Tenacious D? It's like, just sucks. But to be fair. the be- what the Okay. To be fair. Who cares I've- about the band? The, the best song in the world. That's a good song. You don't like it? Ah. But even the film clip's good, man. I've never seen the film. The Devil in the Makeup, it's sick. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know the one. This is the best song in the world. Ah! <laughs> best Day Ever by SpongeBob SquarePants is better than that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Keelan just disqualified himself from having opinions there. <laughs> this, is, this is why whenever Keelan comes out with like a hot trash opinion you just gotta let him have it you go yeah yeah all right buddy yeah tenacious d sucks doesn't it how good spongebob songs hey you go go sit in the corner and play with your blocks off you go buddy i just mean in that that is a shit song and yeah. i think that that is better than tenacious d right okay that's, <laughs> that's what i mean yeah look i can't i i feel like i don't have the the i don't i can't really comment on the quality of music because today I just realized that I'm so excited for Coldplay that I don't want to spend a few hours going from Frankston to Docklands beforehand. So I booked a hotel so that I can get there in, at like 12 p.m. to the hotel and then relax and then go to the place and then I don't have to worry about coming home. Are they doing a show in Melbourne? And it's in Melbourne and I live here, yeah. November. Really? Yeah. Oh, I thought they were only doing Perth. They so they were, and I tried to get tickets to Perth, like that. everyone yeah. in Australia and the fucking Philippines. Apparently, <laughs> fucking people, are, dude. When I when I missed out on tickets, <laughs> and then I saw people writing in broken English that they got tickets to Perth, I was like, fucking, ban, ban them at the border! <laughs> Don't let them in. I went full. As soon as I saw that, I went full Pauline Hanson. Don't let them in. <laughs> um, you shouldn't be allowed to do to buy tickets in countries that you don't live in. Unless you were the lovely people from the Netherlands who came and saw me in Dublin. But I didn't sell out fucking six months in advance, all right? In fact, I didn't sell out at all. So that's all right. Did you see the news? That anyway, I got tickets. Speaking of shit music taste. Yeah. Did you see, I'm very excited for you. Is that's Yeah. Uh, I can't wait. I'm going to get the bracelet and they're going to yeah. turn the lights off and then they go, don't film it. And then someone will film it. And then that is cool. Yeah. That's very cool. And staying in a hotel, I think that's worth it. Um, did you see the news today? Green Day mm-hmm. have announced they're coming back after they canceled their 2020 show. Why did they cancel their 2020 show? Because the pandemic. Oh, right. Cool. But if you remember, we were on the. Regional- Why did they cancel their 2020 show? I <laughs> wonder. We were on the. Regional tour. Yeah. Mike got us, do you remember the tickets, like our pre-access tickets, like only for industry people. And then we all bought tickets to this uh, Hella Mega tour. Wait, so do we still have those tickets? No, we, we all got refunded. Oh, them. boo. But I was so excited. This I thought you'd match my energy. I was so excited when they're coming that they're coming back. When are they coming back? March 1st next year. Sick. Are tickets on sale yet? I think September, not, during September or something, yeah. Cool. Well, All right. October 9th. We'll, we'll ha- well, how about you and me? We'll sit together and we'll both miss out on tickets. <laughs> we'll try our best and miss out. There's no way we get tickets to Green Day. Although I got tickets to Coldplay. It's at Marvel. Okay. It's possible then. I don't know. Yeah. Although the only reason I got tickets to Coldplay, I had to, I had to buy the most expensive ones that weren't like the thousand dollar ones. Mm. I think my I've it's the most I've ever paid for a ticket and probably ever will. I think it was four hundred dollars, but I'm right at the front and I get early that's cool. entry. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I'm gonna cry. There, well, Green Day are doing a show in, and you know what? I'm gonna stand at the front and everyone behind me, you won't see shit. You're gonna be looking at my back. I hope you enjoy the view of the back of my head. This is, if you buy t- if you go to Coldplay and you're in the and you're in the front section, this is what you're gonna see. Dun, 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 dun. If I if I that's that's another reason why I need to get a hotel for the after the show is because I'm probably gonna have to have a shower because I'm I bet I'm gonna get sixty beers thrown at the back of my head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll bring a step ladder so so short women can climb up on my shoulders. <laughs> All right, next. Well, 
if Green Day crush it, the Melbourne show, I'm going to go on Tixel the next day and buy mm-hmm. tickets to their Sydney show. <laughs> so, but only if they do really well. Only if they crush. Only, look, if they impress me, I'll go again. If they impress me, I'll give a scalper $100. I went in 2017 and they were good. I've seen them before. I saw them when I was a kid, uh, when I was like maybe 15 or 16, and I just like thoroughly didn't appreciate it. Yeah. Because my brother really wanted to go and me, mum and dad both went and I, I, I sat down the whole show <laughs> with dad and just I just did the grumpy teenager thing. I was like, yeah, whatever. It's Green Day. Who cares? <laughs> Fuck was I doing? I just ruined it for myself. So it's 9-11, huge day for us who love uh, 9-11 memes. <laughs> this is one of my favorite times of year on Twitter because I get to I get to see the best of the best 9-11 memes and you get to see like what some of the young kids are coming up with when it comes to making memes out of one of the most horrific terrorist attacks that's ever hit the United States. Uh, and I tell you what, the kids have still got it. Okay, there's been, I've been laughing, I've been giggling, I've been chuckling. There are some banger 9-11 creatives out there that you can tell have been sitting on gold for about three months going, oh, 9-11's coming up, I've got something cooking, you know? Have you ever wanted to, to hear, know about like what would, what would the, what would Chapel Roan look like if she was at ground zero? You know, I've seen that and it's quite funny. Um, and that's, that's what it's, that's what this is really all about. It's, it's. Unfortunately, when they coined the slogan, never forget, they didn't also say, we must also remember with some respect. Because the it seems that the way that Americans and the rest of the world have chosen to remember is through th- the most horrific memes that you could possibly think of. You know, it's like one of the first ever, like, too soon jokes on forums because this is 2001 so this is before all social media this is forums man 9 11 2001 some visionary went on the day that it happened to to a forum i can't remember the name of and grabbed unbelievably famous wrestler at the time hulk hogan and photoshopped him doing pile drives on the towers and kicking <laughs> the towers over <laughs> And every year that gets posted of like this, this like oh, these memes are very funny, but this guy did it first. One of the one of the very first ever, dude, check out this famous person ah, and the terrorist that attack. That's so funny. That's that's not recent. That's from two thousand and one. That's history. Hulk Hogan kicking down the towers. <laughs> And that's what 9 is all about. It's about just <laughs> jumping on Twitter and looking at the cream of the crop of 9-11 memes. That's what I do. That's how I celebrate or remember. <laughs> and then and yeah, you go on Twitter and it's like mostly memes and then and then and then like there's like a good 20 to 30 percent of people going, the Jews did it. They're, they're dancing Israelis. Their camera went missing. And then, and then, like a good ten percent going. Bush did it. He knew about it the whole time. Why did the guy who, who owned the towers not show up for work that day? He took out an insurance policy. He got four point five billion. How did he know? And then, and then other people going. No, I think it was just a very sad terrorist attack. And then, and then there's like uh, there's like a bunch of people that that everyone should be paying attention to going. Oh, <laughs> I still have lung cancer from when the building fell over. Can I please have my pension? He's a firefighter. But no one cares about them. Uh, excuse me? Heroic firefighter? We're trying to focus on the people that are, are not alive. <laughs> Show some respect. Um. <laughs> so all I'm trying to say, guys, is skibbity toilet riz. Do you think that like um, <laughs> that if politicians are getting up in parliament and saying shit like phantom tax and Kaisenat, do you reckon that that now Kaisenat has to go up and put forward his idea for immigration policy in Australia? Just show them how it's done. 
just cracks his knuckles and he's like, all right, here's how we're going to stop the boats. I would like to see that. <laughs> Have you seen that video of Astro Speed in uh, some Asian country and he's eating a meat and everyone in the restaurant starts going, What meat was it? Meow. Oh. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> meow. And then he goes, What the fuck is this cat? <laughs> Oh, that's uh, that's sweet when I make a racist joke and then it was just reality. Was he actually <laughs> a cat? I don't know. So it was the the Asian people doing that. Oh, because they didn't speak English, so they were trying to communicate yeah. what he was eating? Yeah. That's, uh, that's then, awesome. You know how he doesn't break character? Yeah. He breaks character. <laughs> He's like, oh, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> See, it's not the Haitians you got to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, that's funny. Dr. Disrespect has returned. All right. Dr. Disrespect, he's have you watched his video rebuttal? No. So, all right. So now let's let's say Keelan, all right. So um let's say, let's say hypothetically. Very hypothetically, you've been accused of being a pedophile. Mm -hmm. And not only have you been credibly accused, but you have also admitted to it. <laughs> right? So this is like a this is a great thought exercise for everyone at home. So imagine, close your eyes, imagine that you have been credibly accused by multiple sources, including your previous employer, people that knew you, a victim, uh <laughs> Forbes magazine. <laughs> The New York Times, they've all accused you of being a pedophile. You've responded to this initially by saying, yes, <laughs> I've had very inappropriate conversations with a minor. Okay. Now, all right, this is where the thought experiment comes out. How do you get out of that? Here's what I would do. <laughs> I would take all of my millions of dollars that I've made and retire with my family mm -hmm. and move to maybe another country and in, and enjoy my life and attempt to atone for what I've done. That's Pretty an good. Interesting way. Yeah. yeah. Do you, what, what would you do, Keelan? I think probably similar. Yeah. Um. And then and then every now and then, like I would uh, like on like if I had a couple of drinks, I put the wig on. You know, just hey. but I would shave the mustache. Okay, so here's what Doctor Disrespect has done. He's come out and uh, and he said, because remember when he released that big statement, he he said something along the lines of, "I've had I had uh, conversations with a minor that leaned too far in the direction of being inappropriate," and he said that. But then in the statement, he edited out the word minor, and then everyone was like, "Hey, man." Why did you remove the word minor? And then he put the word minor back in. That's right. So he since deleted the entire statement and he made a video and he said, <laughs> champions, listen up, Champions Club. I put the word minor in my apology to bait journalists and they fell for it. Uh. <laughs> oh, that's your joke's on you. To trick you into believing that I was a pedophile, uh, I called myself a pedophile after being accused of pedophilia. That shows how stupid you are. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, he, and then he goes. And then he, he doesn't say I didn't have inappropriate interaction with the minor. He said I committed no illegal acts. <laughs> oh, all right. So, were you flirting with a? With a 17-year-old? I did nothing illegal. So you did? Like you had intentions to, to, to have sex with a child? No crimes were committed. And everyone agrees. And then people are going, oh, this guy's friends betrayed him. Nothing illegal happened. Dude, you can do so many things that are perfectly legal that are still like morally reprehensible. 
There's so many things that you can do that, like, are not crimes yet, you know, that are not crimes until you cross a certain threshold. Like, having these types of conversations with a minor, not necessarily illegal. And also he's going, oh, it's not, it's, it didn't violate the laws of consent in the state where that person lives in. And the people are going, oh, it's perfectly legal in the state that she was in. Look, bro, if you have an encyclopedic knowledge of the laws of consent in multiple states and countries, you are sus. I'm sorry. If you know, oh, well, actually, in this country, you can do it at 14, and in that, but in that state, you've got to keep it to 16. But in this state, it's okay as long as they're 17 and you don't film it. Hey, man, let's have a look at your hard drive. That's all I'm saying. It reminds me of that joke. I can't remember the comedian. I'm sure if you Google this joke, but it's one of those jokes that every time I think about it, it makes me so angry because it's such a perfect joke. It upsets me that I didn't think of it. It's something like having sex with someone who's like barely legal, like just legal, is the same as paying someone minimum wage. It's you going... If I could pay them less, I would. <laughs> and when you're like almost 40 and you're having conversations that lean too far in the way of inappropriate with a 17-year-old, even though that's legal, soz, bro. You can't be a children's entertainer. Huh? How about that? How about that? I'll do you a deal. You don't go to jail. Sure, nothing illegal was committed, but you also don't get to be a children's entertainer. Is that fair? I feel like that's fair. Take the wig off. So anyway, the latest development is he's released this statement and it basically has not gone well, right? Only freaks are with him and every single influencer has gone, oh, yeah, this is so bad. We, this is the worst response ever. He's gone, oh, yeah, I called myself a pedophile to trick people into thinking I was a pedophile. Also, I, I cannot confirm or deny whether those conversations happened, but if they did, it was legal in the state where they resigned. <laughs> Like, all right, bro, we, we, I, I'm picking up what you're laying down. Uh, even his, his, uh, his friends like that Nick Merckx guy who they used to play games together with all the time. He's come out and said, I don't give a fuck whether it's legal or not. She was 17. That's gross. I don't want you anywhere near me. You're married. You're 40 or you're almost 40. See you later. And then he's also gone that in private, uh, Dr. Disrespect apologized to him after the statement went out of like, oh, yeah, sorry. So it's like, dude, you, the, the, you saying that you interacted inappropriately with a minor is the truth. Now you're backpedaling and trying to make it sound like it was some master plan. All right. Two steps ahead. Two months above the, le the legal minimum age for sexual consent. <laughs> So now he started streaming again. He had his first big stream and uh, he, he joins this, this game uh, called uh, Deadlock where it's like six people aside and it's team-based game, voice chat, right? And the game is still in development. Uh, and as we all know, Dr. Disrespect loves things that are still in development. <laughs> That's a joke about him having uh, trying to have sex with with uh, teenagers going through puberty, uh, which in some states is perfectly legal. <laughs> so there's there's nothing defamatory about that. Um. Anyway, he joins a game, and all five team members leave. <laughs> Are you kidding? Because they because he's playing as Doctor Disrespect and he's got a distinctive voice. And so we, and also people must be like stream sniping and stuff like that. So they would see him streaming. So he joins the game and his entire team leaves. And the dejection on his face is good. I don't know why the fuck you would want to stream after this, especially so recently. Like, I don't get what he's trying to do. Like, is he, has he spent all of his money? Is he terrible with money? Or is it not even about the money? He's just desperately trying to cling on to like being famous and relevant or he's, tr he's like trying to turn the tide. I don't think, I don't know why the fuck you would do this to yourself and your family. 
I just found the clip. It's good. Yeah. Just one by one, they're all leaving. <laughs> and he's, his face. His face is good. See, that's... <laughs> Another one's left. Yep. Yeah. That's very good. And it's the type of game where if your team leaves, like no one can join. It's just you just lose the game. <laughs> Right. So it's just like, like, why would you do that to yourself <laughs> so that me and Keelan can laugh at the dejection on your face <laughs> when you realize that life isn't some fucking scripted character WWE parody that you're doing? It's like, yeah, dude, you can put on the wig and talk in long, obnoxious sentences and play a character, but at the end of the day, it's people are like, yeah, I don't want to watch a guy who's trying to fuck a 17-year-old while they're married with kids. He must just be making so much money per stream because only... He's no, he's demonetized. Uh, YouTube demonetized his channel, so he can't make money from streams. Not even through his channel members. I don't think so. Because at the moment, the only people who can comment are his channel members. And he's got like 30,000. Okay, so maybe he can make money just through channel members. Yeah. Right. He's probably actually just trying to milk it right now while he's trending get as many new channel members so people can comment and then he'll just dip. Yeah, true. I guess if, cause channel members, they're charging monthly, monthly. So he would have, if he disappeared, that would just dwindle. So yeah, maybe he's like, Oh, I'll just stick it out for like six more months and make a mill yeah. and leave. Yeah. That's very interesting. The comments on his, uh, on his stream. Like I was, I watched the playback. I don't know if they've gone through and deleted negative ones, but they're very positive. Yeah, I think that's just because they're his members. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but you, but I, but also still disappointing, mm. you know. But I guess I guess they've just fucking thirteen, fourteen. They're just like, I would hope kids, <laughs> and I I suppose he would hope as well. Hey, that's a joke about him being interested in people going through puberty, which is perfectly legal. So. There's, as as he as he said, there's nothing illegal about that, as as long as as long as look, is, that's his defense. Hey, I, I I know I was trying to have sex with a 16 year old, but it was perfectly legal. All right, bro, because if that's your defense, great, I believe you. Anyway, it's 9 11. We've got a we've got a long day ahead of us of, of refreshing Twitter and laughing. So uh, I'm gonna go. That's the episode we're going to continue on on Patreon uh, for the Patreon members. If you would like to support the show, uh, check out Patreon. There's a Patreon episode that goes up every single episode and you get early access to the main one as well. Buy a t-shirt, loosebeers.com. They look really sick. I actually got a compliment today. I said that. I love the, love the shirt with the jacket. So there you go. If you've got a jacket, the shirt looks good with it too. I had to throw mine out. What have you done to yours? We only have fucking one each. Yeah, my cat shit on it and died. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bin. Bin with love. Keelan's cat did die recently. <laughs> and I didn't realise... Wait, it. you put the cat in the bin too? <laughs> no, there's a big shit stain on it. Oh my god! Do you reckon we should clip that? And that's how we—that's a merch ad, like Spears Pizza Parlor. Buy the buy the T-shirt that Keelan's cat shit in and died. <laughs> Loosebears.com, the perfect shirt for your your beloved pet to shit in and die. Loosebears.com. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have a shit one. Bye. <laughs> Just a bunch of gifts that I'm still <laughs> finding. Oh, fuck.